Good afternoon, church family and friends, and welcome back to my backyard for the daily devotion. And uh, I'm encouraged today. Yesterday was just a, a wonderful day uh, with God, and, and it just seemed like uh, God spoke uh, to us in just a wonderful way, and, and God encouraged our hearts, and the drive-in service was such an encouragement to me, and, and many of you have already said that it was an encouragement to you. And Listen, if that was a blessing to you, why don't you comment in the comments below and, and let me know how, how much of a blessing that was. And, and our current plan and process, uh, thought process, is to do that again on Sunday morning, this, this coming Sunday morning, Mother's Day. And so I hope you make your plans to be there for that. And as it stands right now, unless something changed, so stay tuned to these daily devotions for information. But uh, unless something changes, we will do a drive-in service next week at the same time, 10 o'clock. Uh, that way we can keep a pleasant weather and uh, we'll stage all the vehicles and hopefully it'll go a little smoother with that this time and uh, I encourage you to make it out for that it seemed like it went very well and uh, I was very encouraged by it and so I encourage you to make that and put it on your plans for next Sunday morning now something may change between now and then the world is changing rapidly all the time now and so keep uh, tuned into these daily devotions and you'll have the most up-to-date information particularly Saturday, uh, Saturday's Daily Devotion, you'll have the most up-to-date information for that. So I encourage you about, uh, I encourage you to listen to these, and not because, uh, for anything other than for the news and the, um, the updates on the church services, and it's just the easiest way to put them out. And so uh, make sure you're, you're subscribed and you're, um, you're following and all those kind of things so that you can get that news and that information. Today, uh, I'd like to bring you a devotion out of first or second Peter of course second Peter is a wonderful book of the New Testament uh, it's very akin to maybe second Timothy and uh, Peter is nearing martyrdom and uh, he is writing back here to Christians and trying to explain to them of course this is towards the latter years of his life it's written about uh, in the 60 AD time frame so 30 years after the death of Christ and resurrection and decades have gone on and some of the Bible had been written, but most of it had not. And uh, you'll find here, he says, Simon Peter, in verse number one, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Father, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. According to his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lusts. You'll find here that then he goes on and talks about Christian virtues and then he ex and then he lifts up the word of God highly in the very last part of the chapter. Can I encourage you to read through this chapter and take a sheet of paper and, and read what God is trying to say to you today? Listen, when I read this last night before I went to bed, I was greatly encouraged because I saw something here and that I wanted to share with you. It says, grace and peace be multiplied. Now, I don't know about you, but I want grace from God and I want peace. Matter of fact, those are the two things that I want multiplied in my life. And I know that you want peace in your life. You want the peace that comes from God, not the peace that comes from man, not the false sense of peace that comes from uh, many of the things that we have in our life, but the very great peace of God. You know, it's the God's peace that lets you face, um, that the martyrs faced death with no trouble at all. It's God's peace that lets people go through trials and tribulations with, with, um, with very good, little uh, emotional distress, I suppose, with, with that peace. I guess there's no other way to explain it. It's called the peace that passes all understanding. There's really not a great way to explain it if we can't even quite frankly understand it, now is it? But that peace is way more uh, precious to me than any kind of peace that anyone else can give me because that peace is not near as good as God's peace. So what kind, what kind of things do I want multiplied in my life? I want the peace of God multiplied in my life and I want the, the grace of God in my life 
God's grace. Grace means unmerited favor. I want God's favor. I want it to be the favor multiplied in my life and in my family and in my church and my country. I want God's peace multiplied in my life. You see, when grace and peace are multiplied, man, my heart is lifted in joy. And so where do we get that? Well, he gives us the answer to that. He says that it can be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. And then he goes on, he says, whereby, in verse number four, are given to us exceeding and great, exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. God's given us a great many promises in Scripture. He's given us a great many just precious gifts in the Bible about what he was, he's going to do for us, what he is doing to and through us, and how he was going to take care of us, the home in heaven that we have, the escape from all the torments that once we were bound to because of the sin of our lives, those exceeding great promises. Well, can I tell you that grace and peace can be multiplied through the knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus? How do you get a knowledge of God? Well, can I tell you there are only two ways to know God. There is what's called general revelation. And you've heard me talk about this before if you've attended our church. General revelation means that I look out here and I see these great oak trees and I, I see this grass and I hear these birds and I, I look at the stars, I look at the sun and the moon and I look at um, the very tenuous um, life that is sitting here on this planet and how that it could go all awry in a short notice because God's not only the creator and it's very evident to me that it has to be created but it also he's the sustainer and keeps it from falling apart and by the way I'm not trying to get into the debate today but evolution and all those things still does not solve the great question where did all of it come from they always start with some something well where did that something come from you have to have God or you don't have creation. You don't have what we have without, without a, 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 a uncaused first cause, something that has always been. Not only it can be God. And so the world proves to me that there is a God, and, and, but that doesn't help me know, doesn't help me know him. I can learn some things about him. I can learn that he is, that he is a great artist and that he builds things in such uh, vast wonder. I can see that he is a God of order and of balance and he's a God of, uh, of, of rules because we have all these laws of, of physics and, and the law. So I can, I can learn some things about God. You see, grace and peace won't be multiplied by general revelation. Special revelation, God gave us this wonderful book where he said, let me reveal myself to you in a wonderful way. You know the only way that you can know God is to take this, God's word, what he has given you to know him, and to master it. Not just read it, not just occasionally take it to church, not just thumb through it and read a, a few verses a day, but to dive into it and learn the great wonderful mysteries of God. To get to know him and understand him. You know what happens when you know God? The Bible tells us very clearly grace and peace of God is multiplied in your life. Can I encourage you in a day where we have such great access to the Word of God like no other generation, we have more information about God's Word that are, we don't have to learn as much as these Old Testament uh, or these New Testament saints, uh, I'm sorry, the, the first generation or two where they they might have had to learn different languages. I think even like seven, seven, eight hundred years ago where a man would have to have learned Greek or Hebrew to be able to understand the Old Testament languages where you and I have these lexicons and concordances and we can look it up and we don't have to know the original language to be able to go back and look at original meanings. And we live in a day where we have such great wealth of knowing the Word of God, but yet it seems, it seems like the prophecies of a great famine of hearing God's Word has occurred in our lives. I challenge you. I challenge you to read more of the Bible today than you have ever done in one sitting and see what a difference it makes in your life. When I, when you read it, if you come across something you don't quite understand, 
pour over it, read it more, try your best to figure it out, and learn who God is. You know why? God very clearly says that you'll get grace and you'll get peace as a result of it. Hope that was an encouragement to you. I enjoy hearing from you, and uh, we will see you tomorrow.